Hello, everybody. Is that John on there? Indeed. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Tommy. Yo. Uh, Daniel. Hello. Oh, is this your first time on the call? I apologize if it's not. Uh, I was here last week. Okay. Did I get your company affiliation? I, there was somebody I missed last week. Oh, no, you're Google. Never mind. I, I got that. Okay. That was easy. Uh, Slinky, how's it going? Fine. Cool. Now, who did I miss last week? There's somebody new. Do, 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 do. Darn it. Lucas. Hey, Klaus. Hey, Nick. Ba -dum -bum -bum. Hi, Christoph. Hi. And well, you there? Hi there, yeah. Hello. Hey, Timur. Hey, hey, Doug, how are you? Did I spell that right? I can never remember how to spell your name. You <laughs> got spell. it. Okay. <laughs> there are just some names I can never spell right. And, oh, <laughs> I'll change my name just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, hey, Brian. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. So you decided to join us instead of the other community call, huh? Uh, I did actually. Um, yeah. We got to put don't pressure on that. It, Doug. Say it again. Don't make me regret my choice, Doug. <laughs> now we got to put pressure on them to get them to move that meeting because uh, I really want to attend that one, but I just can't uh, skip this one. Okay, yeah, if, if you're also having that thought, I almost emailed uh, about the meeting this time around. So um, I'll go ahead and send an email about trying to get it to not overlap with this. Yeah, that'd be great. Because I, I mean, if it was just me or you, then that'd be okay. But there's quite a few people who I think want to attend that meeting too, who are on this call, so. Yeah, I think I think it makes sense for people to be able to be in both. So um, yeah, cool. I'll send an email for that. Excellent, thank you. All right, back to the fun, Eric. Good morning. Good morning. And Ginger? Howdy. Howdy. Uh, Lance? Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, is that it? Christian? Hey, morning. Morning. Ba -dum -bum. I know Clemens is back from vacation. I wonder if he forgot. All right, one more minute, let's get started. Let me ping Clemens. All right, three after, let's see if I got everybody. I think so, well, oh, small group today. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's see. Okay. Anything from the community that people would like to bring up that's not on the agenda? 
All right, moving forward. So we talked in last week's SDK call about switching back to having a call every other week since we seem to be running out of agenda items. And I posted a message in the Slack channel, like I said I would, and there was no objection. So unless someone raises an objection now, what we're gonna do is switch to, uh, to go back to every other week starting next week. Any objection to that? All right, moving forward. All right, workflow, got some exciting news here. You're up, Timur. Hey, thanks, Doug. Yeah, the exciting news is we got actually accepted as a sandbox project by the TOC uh, yesterday, right? <laughs> Two days ago. So we've been busy. We got our uh, GitHub organization, and I'll pay, paste the link, I mean, in the chat. And uh, other news are we have a Java SDK. They have their own repos now. We kind of copied what you guys do with <laughs> cloud events, of course. And uh, we're working on, again, moving our repo structure over as, as it has changed you know, two times in the last couple of months. Um, other than that, we're going on through an onboarding process right now, which I've never been through. So it's a lot of little things that um, TOC is looking at making sure that we have. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's it. Um, but yeah, and also one more thing, we changed our meetings from once a month to twice a month. So our next meeting will be um, next Monday, the 20th, and I need to update the, the pages to reflect that. So yeah, so for monthly meetings, we just changed to two times a, a month every other week. So that's it. Thanks. Cool. And congratulations. I know you put a lot of effort in there. I know there's a painful process, but it's, it's exciting that it finally went through. Yeah, that was interesting to say the least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and right. uh, one more question, Doug. If, if, uh, can I ask real quick? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know a guy called Josh Burkus from Red Hat? I know of him, yes. Yeah. Well, he asked me, i um, in contact with him, and he actually asked me, they apparently have some sort of booth demo videos for KubeCon in August. And I don't really know what that means, to be honest, but they're looking for like 10 to 15 minute videos they can just play um, on some sort of booth type of setting. And I was wondering if we do that for serverless workflow, we could also add the cloud events in there as well. And I'm sure they would be fine with it. Maybe we can do something together as teams to create some sort of demo videos of something or other um, and, and send it to him. But that, uh, I'll send you his email and then we can figure out exactly what, what to do. Yeah, okay. actually, that's a, that's a great topic because that is actually the very next topic. <coughs> I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> no, it's good. Um, but before we, get, <clears throat> excuse me, before we jump to that, do we have any questions or comments about the rest of the workflow stuff before we jump into that? Okay, now I'm hearing any. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Because I, I got a similar email like you got about this and I wasn't quite sure what they meant by having a booth because I thought everything was virtual. Well, apparently they're gonna have virtual booths as well. Um, and oh, th glad you joined Clemens because I, I wanted to ping you on this too since you and I are both presenting there. Um, so basically there are three different options, well, I guess four options, but the fourth being not gonna do anything at all. But there are three options are, we, you know, do we wanna actually have a booth, um, which is basically, it's a virtual booth like you see here on the screen. And you can have uh, slides, you can do videos, you can have downloadable material. And basically I think the, the point here is that people can just virtually walk up see a video that's playing constantly or download material, right? So it's not nearly as as interactive, I don't think. Um, I think you can chat with someone if you yeah, want they, through a chat. They have yeah. chat, they have chat and stuff like that, yeah. Okay, right, but I think, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Ginger, that the other option is more uh, like face-to-face, -face, virtually interactive, right? Rather than a chat, it's a Zoom call, is that right? Right, so the the second option I think Nats will probably do the second option just because you have more control over it and it's a little bit more focused, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, this is all new for us as well because this is the first time we've done anything like this. Um, we're also concerned if we did a booth about how much content we would actually have to put up there. Um, and, and I don't know how much feedback we could get from it. So we don't know if people like it, don't like it other than that. So I think we're gonna go with the, the Zoom as well right okay and then obviously the third option is to do a combination of both 
And so my question for the group here was, is there any interest in doing either of these two options or three options, I guess? Because um, it is, if you look down here, I know it's a little bit of small print, but I wanted each one to fit on a line. There is a fair amount of time commitment. Now, I don't know if you have to necessarily do the entire, all, all the hours listed for, for all the days or just a subset, but it is a commitment from folks. And I know that not being there physically makes it harder to make a commitment because you get pulled off on emails and other phone calls and stuff. So if, if people do want to do this, then I think they have to be prepared to, to make it a real live commitment and not to say, yeah, I'll do it and then not show up. Um, I'd rather say yeah. no than have people be disappointed in us and not meeting our objectives. Yeah, and the time zones for the U.S., um, especially Pacific time, are very, very, very early. So. Yeah, good point. Yes. Okay, so any questions about what's going on here before I ask the question of do people want to do it or not? Do people understand what we're sort of talking about here? And here's the list of materials and stuff, at least for the booth. Okay, so let me ask, do we have anybody who wants to, who thinks this is a good idea and is willing to volunteer to, to sign up for either of these two options? And I believe I'll have to let them know by the end of today or tomorrow. It's, it's a fairly quick decision. Should I interpret silence as no one has any interest in doing anything? Okay, I'm gonna assume that. So the decision by the group, correct me wrong, is we will not do anything. True? Well, do you want to do anything? I, I'm torn. I gotta be honest with you. I, I, I kind of like the idea of having something just to keep our name out there, but I honestly gotta tell you, I, I don't know if I have the time to put into it to make it worthwhile. I mean, I might, I might be able to do an hour here or there, but if, if it's that random, I'm not sure how we're gonna get, you know, the impact we want to make it worthwhile. I, I think of option one as an interesting marketing idea, um, but I'm not, useful, I, I'm not sure how useful that is. I mean, it's a great, what I mean is marketing experiment. Yeah. Well, maybe what we should do <laughs> is have Ginger be our guinea pig and see how it goes for gnats and then, and then look at the next time around. <laughs> I feel like we're a guinea pig for CNCF for a lot right now. So um, <laughs> I think, and I have not gotten confirmation from Katie yet. I think we have to tell her today if we're going to do anything. Um, my assumption for the Zoom, so option two, <clears throat> would be that we would be able to, and this again, the assumption, we would be able to pick times and then they would be on the um, schedule. Like, so for the physical one, when we had a maintainer booth, um, we could tell them when we were going to staff it and it was on the schedule. So my assumption is it will be the same type of thing. So you can say we're going to have this Zoom call or whatever from this time to this time and they would be on the schedule. I don't think we have to have an open zoom call for that whole entire extended time i don't think but again we'll find out i can respond and let you know what katie comes back with okay she yeah. said she said she'll come back tomorrow so if i let her know today then they would contact us tomorrow so okay well let's ask that question then so if it is a matter of picking a certain number of hours um across any of the four days um, even if it's just, you know, one hour a day kind of a thing, would people be interested and be willing to sign up to host or to be part of a Zoom call? You well, came off mute because I'm going to pick on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I could help out with something. I mean, it's my time zone, so. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. We could put more pressure on the European folks. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know, I mean, it's, thank you Klaus for, for speaking up, but I don't want Klaus to be the only one. Is there anybody else willing to volunteer? Okay, tell you what, I, I don't mind volunteering. I'll raise my hand to do an hour. Um, maybe I could probably look at maybe doing an hour a day, especially since it means pretty early in the morning here, which means it won't overlap with another call. And I don't mind waking up early. Um, and so tell you what, so Ginger, we'll, we'll pick it back on your idea. I'll send them a note saying, if possible, we'd like to do option two. 
we just don't know the exact hours yet, but chances are it may only be an hour a day and make sure they're okay with that. Yeah, I think that's probably what we'll say as well. So, and we're kind of taking this as a prelude and practice to um, Boston as well, because Boston's going to be virtual as well. So. Okay. And anybody and have any objection or comments about that in terms of, uh, in terms of a direction? Okay. Now, going back to Tamar, your question. Um, what, what's your thoughts on this? Did you want to do something? Obviously, now that you're a full-fledged project, um, actually, let, let me back up. Um, I was kind of assuming that we would do this. Actually, Ginger, do you know, is this for, is, is this for projects or working groups? I'm guessing it might be just for, for projects. As far as I'm aware, it's just projects. Let me look at her email again. Um, graduated incubating and sandbox projects. Okay, so it's just projects. So this would be a CE thing then. Okay, so that means, Timur, you guys from the workflow side, now that you're real, you get the option of doing it as well. Um, I guess it's up to you guys to decide whether you want to, you know, do option one, two, three, or, or nothing, right? Yeah, I mean, you just got, you, you guys just gave me a lot more information than I have previously. Now, I just got an email saying, we're looking for booth demo videos for KubeCon. Do you have anything? <laughs> it's all I know so far. So this, thank you for sharing all this. I'm happy. Okay. But yeah, I mean, um, it, I my initial thought, maybe we can join forces together to kind of create something together. If If not, then that's fine as well, whatever you guys decide. Uh, but yeah, if, if, if you guys want to put together like a couple, two videos to make them have something longer or, or, or whatever, that's fine with me. I'm open. I think, I'm sure we are open for everything. Yeah. So, so I think our current thing is not necessarily to put together a video as much as have uh, a Zoom call. Now, okay. we could combine if you wanted to, right? We could make it a Zoom call, assuming that the, the organizers are okay with this. We could say, uh, we could do a single Zoom call where it covers all serverless related things, right? Cloud events, the other specs we're working on in cloud events, as well as the workflow stuff. And, and we can call it a serverless thing, even though it's supposed to be a project oriented thing and see if they're okay with that. Um, so it's a little bit more of a work group thing. Um, but if they really, really want to keep it focused just on a project perspective, then I think, um, yeah. then I think merging the two might be a little bit awkward because I don't think, I don't think the two projects go close enough from an outsider's perspective to, to, to make sense. So you may want to look that at doing sense. your own Zoom call or thing. All right, I'll ask. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. yeah, I'll, I'll ask too, because because I think if we can merge the two, it may be easier for us to man the Zoom call, right? Because I think we could probably get people on our side to at least answer some very high level questions about the workflow spec. And likewise, the workflow folks could probably answer some cloud events question if they really had to, because I know you guys are trying to use cloud events under the covers as well. So in terms of getting coverage for more hours, I think combining forces might be better, but only if they're okay with that. Okay. So I'll reach out to them and then we can, we can talk offline, but I think we have to get an answer back today or tomorrow at the latest kind of a thing. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Any other questions or comments on that topic? All right, before I jump into PRs and stuff, are there any other topics people wanted to bring up that I forgot to add to the agenda? Yeah, sorry, Doug, me again, I talked yes. too much in this meeting. I just wanted to kind of tell everybody, uh, <clears throat> and again, it's this Red Hat thing. We have these things called Tech Tuesdays. It's some sort of uh, video that can be from 30 to one hour long. And it's an interview style thing where people just uh, go on there and, and learn about some different technologies. And there is opportunities in August, if anybody here is interested, to kind of promote cloud events. And uh, let me know, just send me like a note or an email or whatever, and I'll s try to find some, some, some schedule for it if you guys would like to take that opportunity. Uh, that's all. all right, cool. All right. Thank you. All right. Anything else? All right. In that case, Slinky, I believe this one is yours, so you got to go first. I did mention this on last week's call, so people hopefully took some time to review it. But you want to just refresh people's memory on what this one's about? 
uh, so this is a follow up of the of the PR we uh, I did about uh, adding some rules uh, about SDK governance, and this one had some criteria to to add new maintainers to the SDK projects. So uh, I'm waiting for feedback, basically. Okay. So let me ask some of the SDK folks on the call. And I see Lance and Clemens and I don't know who else is there. Anybody have any comments on this? Did you folks get a chance to review it? I added some comments, I think it was last week when, when it was first, um, uh, first submitted. And, you know, I'm generally okay with it. I have a few comments there. Okay, but th those were addressed since I don't see them anymore, right? Huh. Yeah, I think I just all your comments, Lance. Uh, oh. Yeah, oh, there is a disagreement on that. But. Let me just see if there's anything else. So do, do you guys need to review, um, to re go back and forth on these offline? Yeah, I think uh, we need I to raise your I, I didn't see that you had responded, <laughs> Francesca. <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll follow up on that. I mean, okay. We'll yeah, we'll love if also other people jumps in the discussion too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Don't uh, need to rush it then. Offline, of of course. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. Any, any, uh, I guess I should ask any questions at this point in time for Francesco? Does anybody want to bring anything up or do you want to just take it offline? Okay. I'm not hearing any questions, so we'll do it offline. Okay. This one, very easy. Just didn't merge it because no one bothered to add an LGTM. I just noticed we missed, we're missing the PHP and Rust. Uh, SDKs to the README, any objection to adding those? All right, I didn't think so. Obviously feel free to LGTM, easy stuff like this if you guys want, or if you notice. Do, 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 do. All right, this one. Okay, so on last week's call, I introduced the idea of adding a unique identifier per service um, that is immutable so that on a subsequent query, you can know whether this is the exact same service or not, because maybe every bit of metadata has changed, but obviously if this one field can't change, then you'll know it is the exact same thing, just with different metadata. Um, now, Klaus, you asked a question about down here, this, this, this is the interesting one that I didn't quite understand. You're wondering whether this belongs on the service or the service, I'm sorry, on the endpoint or on the service? And I didn't quite understand what you meant by discovery endpoint. Well, um, in a scenario where um, you have different discovery uh, endpoints, assume you, you have something like an intermediary or multiple intermediaries that um, provide this um, discovery to this event, or the service, um, does it have to be the same UUID uh, for the service on all of those discovery endpoints? Or so is it identifying the service or is it uh, identifying the service entry on a specific um, discovery endpoint? Okay, I wanna make sure I understand the scenario. So I, I think what you're saying is, let's say you have a, a discovery endpoint that people can hit directly but then that same discovery endpoint is available through something like an aggregator or something like that. Yes. Would the same service UUID appear through both portals basically, or through both endpoints? Yes. Yeah. Anybody have an opinion on that? I, I, I was, in my comment, I was, I was willing to sort of leave that up to an implementation choice, but I don't know whether that's too loosey goosey. What do other people think about Klaus's scenario? Oh, come on, you guys can't be that quiet. So, okay, Klaus. <laughs> so, so I myself, I didn't, uh, I don't have a clear opinion on this yet yeah. because I think we, we just don't have those scenarios yet. Right. Um, so let me ask you this, since you seem to be the only one speaking up on this one. Um, do you think we need the ID at all? Do you agree that, I, that with my base scenario? It's a um, good question. 
I mean, because it is possible that I'm 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 way off the deep end, and this isn't needed at all. I just I just don't understand so how to. How to do I this remember check. that we we had that discussion where I was asking how a discovery endpoint can assure that those names are always unique if it's aggregating names from different uh, sources or um, services and. Um, So I'm not sure if that was the motivation to, to add this ID here. Yeah, it wasn't so much because of the name thing in terms of an aggregation. It was more a realization that anybody may have made a typo when they added this service mm -hmm. entry. And I, as I was looking through all the various attributes, I didn't see one that jumped out at me that said, I, it doesn't matter if you made a typo, you cannot change this because it's going gonna, it's gonna to mess with people. Everything seemed like it, was, it ran the risk of it may change over time, right? You may add or remove types. You may have done a typo in the name. You may have done a typo in, any, in the description. I couldn't find anything that didn't fall in the category of someone may have goofed, right? And they don't want to, they don't want their users to view this as a brand new service, right? They just want to update the metadata about an existing one. And that's, and that's why I came up with a need for something that's immutable, like an ID, not something that's something that's something that people would typically expose to their users. It's more of an internal usage kind of a thing. Okay. So uh, I don't know. It's it's just um, UIDs can can be quite useful in some cases, but I always have also mixed feelings about them. Um, I did some research on. Uh, I mean, for example, in Kubernetes, you have both. Uh, also, you have names and UIDs and used slightly in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, so names are kind of providing a stable link. And, and while uh, when you access something over the UID, you are sure that you're accessing the very same instance again. Um, so I was wondering if that translates somehow to, to our situation. And, and that's how I came up with this question about, is it identifying that entry or is it identifying the service and as i said i don't really i mean what i proposed here is also to to just uh, accept the pr but uh, maybe create an issue to remind us to think about this later on once we have more scenarios we are looking at or we started implementing it mm -hmm. okay so Matthias, you're 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 uh, off mute. Did you want to say something? Um, basically, I'm I'm agreeing to that. What Klaus said, I was just uh, thinking about to add something what Klaus related. So um, we uh, I agree that we need probably more scenarios to um, decide this, but um, unique ideas would be very helpful, especially as you explained that we don't have specified something that can't be changed. Okay. Sounds like some kids are having some fun in the background. <laughs> um, okay. So, so Klaus, you, you, you said something in there about, you know, maybe accept the PR and open an issue to remind us to go back and revisit this. What do people think about that? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm torn here because I do think this is needed. So I obviously that's why I opened the PR, but the fact that I'm not hearing speak up makes me a little bit nervous about whether I'm the only one. And I don't want to add something if I'm the only one that thinks it's needed. I mean, are, are people being silent because they think, yeah, it's needed and you're okay with it? Or you're not, people just aren't sure. I will start picking on people if I have to to get some opinions on this. Okay, you're going to make me do it. Clemens, I'm going to pick on you since you were on vacation for two weeks. Yes. What's your, what's your take on this one? Uh, I, don't have, I have not formed an opinion yet because I was on vacation for two weeks. Oh, that's a nice out. Okay. Well, that's... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Let me pick on somebody else. How about Mr. Mitchell? John. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Sorry. Um... I, 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 I haven't, uh, I admit I have not thought about it. Um, I think, uh, I think given where we are today, my bias is sort of with Klaus that, uh, I mean, I agree with your initial impetus that I think we need something to deal with those 
whatever you want to call it, sort of life cycle conflicts, right? Whether it's a typo or other thing, I just haven't thought through the implications of the, you know, how is this actually going to play through? So okay. I guess my cop out is uh, I, I would rather have more time uh, okay. to, uh, to think through that. Okay. Fair enough. So we had at least one request for more time. So why don't we go ahead and, and, uh, and do that. I would like to see if we can come up with some kind of decision by next week's call. Cause I think this one has been out there for two or three weeks now. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily a huge controversial thing, um, but I think it's more a question of people needing to take the time to look it over and think about it some. Um, and in the meantime, um, maybe Klaus, I'll reach out to you off, offline to see if, if we can try to address your concern here. If not, sure. if we do like the general direction, then we'll open an issue to remind ourselves. But I'd like to see if I can address your concern in this PR if I can. Um, anyway, uh, Brian, your hands up. Yeah, I was going to put myself out there with maybe a really naive question. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if a client has received one of these IDs, um, how long do we expect it to be valid for? Are they allowed to stash it away and come back a month later and expect it to still be valid? So, uh, so my answer to that would be, it's not a question of how long are they valid for, because I think, I, I think it's it's valid as long as the service is alive within the scope of this discovery endpoint, right? So it's not like this is a temporary idea in any sense, right? As long as this service exists in the discovery endpoint, this is the unique ID for it. And so that remain is intended to remain true across discovery endpoint restarts and across service restarts and across all time. As long as that service exists and you want it to be known as the same service that it was X number of days ago, yes. Okay, because the minute, because the, the, minute the value changes, then anybody who received it is going to think, oh, this is a brand new one. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, uh, it does. Okay, Thank cool. You. And actually, that, that is a good point. I'm, I'm not sure the text in there is as clear as that, and I'll try to beef up the text a little to make that perfectly clear. So it is a good question. Okay, so I'm hearing people want more time to think it over. That's fine. Any last questions or comments on this before we move on to the next one? Yeah, one. Um, so what is the URL for? It, it specifies how to access this service to subscribe that's in the description. So why is this not being unique? Why is this not the ultimate identifier? Um, and then, or, or if, if another identifier is needed, could there be more than one URL to access the service? Okay, so you, you switched over to URL, okay. So to me, the URL wasn't able to be used as a unique identifier because people could move where their hosting service is hosted, right? So for example, maybe, instead of today it being a URL with ibm.com in it, maybe it's discoveryendpoint.ibm.com, right? But it is still the same uh, service that's being deployed. It's just, we're just hosting it at a different endpoint, right? So that's why to me that, that the URL field might actually change over time, but it still could be the exact same service under the covers. Does that answer your question? Thanks. Okay. Cool. Okay. Unless there are other questions, like we can move on. We'll defer this one for next week. I mean, it. I will okay, just say that it sounds like you're driving towards the ID really being tied to the service and in no way related to the discovery endpoint, um, which is in a sense a resolution to that to that question on the PR. I think. Yes, I, th I, th I think you're right. I think that is the direction my mind is going, yes. And so the discovery endpoint is more just, you know, your HTTP server that's communicating some backend information, yes. And, I, and I, I could try to work some text around that, and you're right. I think that might help answer Klaus's question to some degree. Okay, cool. 
Um, next one, I took an action to write up a draft of how we would do um, pagination for at least a discovery spec. But as I started writing this up, I realized that we actually might need this for uh, the schema spec as well, or at least some other specification out there. Anything that basically does a query over records to be to use generic terms. And so um, what I decided to do was to rather than embed this inside the discovery spec was to actually create a separate document itself that talked about how to do pagination just in general. And then we could uh, say uh, or our pointers to it from the discovery spec or any other spec that might need it. And the basic approach I took here was to steal what I saw from a GitHub and referencing, I can't remember the, the actual RFC number, but basically when you do a query, you can specify do, 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 an initial query of something like this, right? Where you specify the number of records you want to get per chunk, size equals 100. And then the response can include some HTTP headers with links that tells you, for example, how to get the next set um, or the previous one if you wanted. Now, the one thing I did do was out of the option for the server to return and it expires. Um, and the reason I did this was because I didn't want to assume that at this spec level, I, how do I say this? So at the spec level, I didn't want to mandate whether the, that whether the data that could change on the server could change uh, or not, right? I wanted, you be, I wanted the server to be able to in essence support both, meaning when they get the initial query up here, do they create in essence a result set for that particular query that gets persisted off to the side? That way, if the, um, if the result, if the data in the backend server changes, the result set becomes static, right? And in order to do that, I wanted the server to be able to return um, some information that says, how long is this data good for? That way the client knows they better retrieve all the data before that expires time, otherwise it may go away. Without that, then you're back to the case where the data on the server doesn't change very often, so you don't need to worry about this situation and everything can be kind of stateless, right? It's a, it's a little bit funky to think about, but I wanted to make the spec generic enough to try to support both use cases. And the way, the way I wanted to make it, or it, the way I wanted this client to know which case he was in was whether the expires time popped up there. Now, that's not to say that there couldn't be other information included in here that, that's opaque to the client. Meaning, let's say, for example, the server is in this scenario where it's a static, I'm sorry, not a static, a, a temporary data set that gets generated, but he needs some sort of unique identifier on each subsequent request to identify which result set to, that is, that's being queried over, right? So they may include not just a size query parameter, but maybe some sort of identifier in there. And that's okay. <clears throat> the client doesn't need to know about it, doesn't need to care about it. This link is completely opaque to them. They don't know anything about it whatsoever. The only thing they need to know is to use it. And if the expires time is here, they need to finish their results set retrieval before the expires time happens. Okay. So really all they need to care about is just whether it exists or not and not really understand much more about it. So anyway. So is that, the, is that the URI you're getting back? Is, is, is that the idea? So this is the URI you get back in terms of where you're supposed to do your next query, or I'm sorry, this is the next one because the, the rel equals next, right? So here's the URI you send your next one to and you just treat it as an opaque blob or an opaque URI. Just sure. do an HTTP get to it. And if you're quick, you don't ever need to even think about the expires, right? Mm -hmm. But if, if for some reason you, you know that you're very, very slow in doing the retrieval, the expires time here tells you, well, you better not be too slow because that result set may go away at that expires time. There, there's a whole negotiation mechanism in, in HTTP for this. Is there? Point me yeah. to the spec and I'll, and I'll leverage that, yeah. So there is, um, if you take a look at, um, effectively for interacting with caches, if you if you page forward, you might, be, might want to go and, and page back. Mm -hmm. And so your HTTP browser knows about this and um, the servers know about this. So if you are, if you have a, a pages and you page forward and then you page back, then the server may go and give you a, well, I don't have anything that's modi modified and gives you a, um, a status of 
I haven't looked at this in, in a long time, but 400 something. Mm -hmm. And then, then you get the answer from your local cache. Um, so that is all, of course, in RFC 7232. 7232, okay. And then you can look at 3.3. Okay, because I did find RFC 5988, which is where I got this linking stuff from. But I, I did not look at... Yeah, 72, 72 um, uh, 32 has all the preconditions and last modified and e tags, et cetera, all, that, all those things. So I think what you're trying to model here is already um, in, in that spec. It doesn't end up in the, in the URI, um, but it ends up in headers. But I think that's mostly um, what, the, um, um, what, what you're looking for. Okay, cool. I will take a look at that. Yeah, because if we can just point to that RFC, then we could kill my entire idea and just, and just, and just yeah, reference I, it. That'd be cool. I, I think we need to have paging um, as well. But there is a, I'm sure there's this um, um, top and skip mechanism mm -hmm. that is probably similar to what you have here. Yeah, because I think um, there's a, there's, yeah. I did define so how, I think that's how we do paging in, on, in our services. Um, and, but I'm sure there's some RFC out, out there which already defines that. It's okay. also used in OData, I think. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, OData, yes. I, and, and as things go, I just look at, a, at an SAP block, block, uh, block entry um, that uh, talks about top skip and count. Okay. So yeah, yeah so you, if you take a look at o, o data is uh, is probably not bad for that. And I'm guessing that if O data does this, then stuff like um, what's that thing called um, GraphQL uh, might have something something similar. Cool. Okay, I will definitely take a look at that. Cool. Thank you. And I guess there's nothing more to discuss on this one. Then let me go off and take a look at that RFC and see if we can just leverage that puppy. Fabulous. Yep. All right. Any other hello questions comments? All right, cool. Thank you, Clements, for the pointer. Um, all right, now this one was just open, I think, yesterday, so it's probably too soon. I was, it was definitely too soon to to um, to accept. And Thomas isn't even here. Um, oh, cool. Thank you, thank you, Klaus. Um, okay, so obviously he has a, I guess, an open API for the discovery spec. Uh, I suspect no one's had a chance to take a look at it, so please do so. Seems fairly short. Okay. Any other little comments, questions? I assume this is something we, we probably do want, assuming it's technically correct. Okay. In that case, um, this one, Christoph, I know you just opened this today, but would you like to explain how you tried to address this problem? Yes, I can. I, we talked about it, I think or three weeks before. Um, mm -hmm. So the main one issue is that in the HTTP protocol binding, we talk about content modes and we have two modes called binary and structured. And they have exactly the same name as the two message modes we define in the spec. And that is very confusing because one assumes they are the same thing but they're actually not. <laughs> but it's obviously very confusing because they have the same name. So I try to be, um, and they obviously relate to each other. Um, so the, the real difference um, pops up once the, the batch mode comes in, which happens to be a structured message mode, at least in my opinion, um, because it fulfills the definition of the structured, of a structured mode message. Um, because it contains both the um, attributes and the data inside the message. So I try to clarify it here um, by being more explicit in the protocol binding. And if you scroll down to the spec, um, I basically already um, wrote the bottom half in the uh, PR by, uh, was his name Tim? No, sorry, forgot it. Um, it, was, it was Grant. Uh, Grant, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. 
So in the below the message modes, the upper part, I said um, that for the binary mode message, usually they're just used as they are and uh, transport protocol doesn't do much. But for the structured mode message, they're often embedded. Um, and then I added some more details uh, below what that embedding can mean. So sometimes there's more uh, things added as a wrapper around the message. So we see this especially with JSON. Um, so you may add other things or you may batch several messages together. Okay. Yeah. Any questions for Christoph while he's on the line? Yeah, what is... So... I don't understand what what one thirty nine to one forty one adds. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I try to clarify it for for I think a lot of people are confused. I agree that technically all of this is already there, but it's just a lot of people stumble over it. So I'm trying to add more text to make it easier to get grasp. So you introduce in the, the notion of an envelope. Um, and I'm not sure there's an envelope in HTTP. So I, I, I didn't think claim I there is an envelope. I know what you no. want, but I don't think the text carries that well. Because I mean, there, no, not, HTTP is not a good example. So HTTP does not have an envelope. That's correct. But if you look at, I don't know, Kafka, if you look at, uh, for example, the, the uh, pub sub binding that I looked at over the last uh, few weeks, um, Kafka, they all have an envelope around it. So Kafka calls this a record. Yeah. Yeah, actually, it's it's not even true. It, for Kafka, it is the value of a key value pair which makes up a record. And then for MPP, it's the it's the body of of the MPP uh, message. But there's no envelope there. If I, if I say envelope, I think of um, of soap, for instance, as a abstraction that sits between the transport um, container or transport body and uh, the um, and the payload and that we have no case yeah fair enough i used uh, i think a a different term first but um doc used envelope i think i mean i happy to uh, to Choose a different name, or even drop the whole sentence. <laughs> and, and then, and then I find I find sentence one fifty three is actually conf is is conflating to, is conf that is really conflating two things. So, for instance, so you never use it once you use binary, then you never you you don't use an event format ever. Because you're taking the payload of the event and you map that straight to whatever the payload uh, uh, section is in your transport message. But the event format doesn't play a role here. So Clements, I'm wondering whether it'd be useful um, for you to take a look at the original issue. Yeah. Um, just because the, I, while, while Grant opened the issue, at least I think Grant opened it, I think it was on behalf of somebody else at Google and they were confused by some of the terminology we're using. Um, so maybe it may help if you get that background first then to better understand uh, okay. what, we're, what, 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 the re, what the desired goal is, put it that way. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll look, so, yes, because the, the um, I think the envelope, so the un envelope term trips me up and that might be my age. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, so I, I, think, I, I, I think I know what sort of clarification Christoph is after. Um, yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me look yeah. at that and we'll, we'll talk about that again. I'll, Christoph, I'll probably um, uh, reach out to you directly on this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. 
Yeah, I mean, it, obviously it was just open today, so it's too new to approve anyway. Um, yeah, 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 okay. But, so, yeah. Okay, any other questions on this one or, or points of discussion people wanna bring up? Okay, in that case, moving forward. Um, but -um -bum -bum. I don't think there's anything on these. I know Gem is in here. Francesco, I assume these are still on hold, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So interrupt. So um, I know Remy was working on implementation. I have been as well. And Remy said he couldn't make the call today. And from my side, to be honest, I haven't had a chance to do anything for two weeks to work on this. So there's no changes. Um, <clears throat> does anybody have any comments, feedback on any implementation they may be working on at this point in time? Or even just want to mention that they're working on one. Okay, not hearing any. Okay, so obviously, you know, we, we'll try to keep going in the background. Um, and when people do have something that's uh, runnable, we'll, we'll look to do some sort of interop testing or something along those lines. We'll see how it goes. Um, but at least from my point of view, it, it is helping to flesh out some issues like that ID thing that I brought up earlier. Okay, um, technically that's the end of the agenda. Are there other topics people would like to bring up? All right, not hearing any. Uh, I think I got everybody on the agenda except for Grant, because I think Grant, you just joined. You there, Grant? Yeah, yeah, I just joined. Okay, cool. Yep, um, and just to let you know, I suspect you may have joined because of the SDK call. Um, however, we agreed to meet every other week and we're gonna start doing that next week, just to let you know. Okay, uh, so it's, okay. Man, that's- I'm, Every other I was, week. Sounds yeah, good. yeah, every other week starting next week, yeah. Okay. okay. All right, did I miss anybody else for the attendee list? All right, well, I think that's it then, cool. Thank you everybody for joining. We'll talk again next week. And please review the new PRs when you get a chance. Fabulous. Yep, okay. bye everybody. Bye. 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 bye.